Finally, in the Power Four, we'll go to the ACC Championship game. This game is 8 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. The Clemson Tigers and the SMU Mustangs. SMU is about a two-and-a-half point favorite. The total somewhere in the 56 range or so. Clemson is 5-0 and in conference championship games since 2017. Um, so they've fared well in this situation in the past. And this might, this might be the most intriguing conference championship game if you like fallout, if you like trickle-down effects. Because if Clemson wins, they're in the dance. What does that mean for SMU? Then SMU, do they bump out Alabama, who's not playing this weekend? Or does Alabama stay in front of SMU, whose resume is very comparable to that of Miami, who Bama was just in front of? But you look at the metrics, SMU is better from a defensive defensive efficiency standpoint, some of the other metrics that they would favor. So this one with massive implications for that final spot and obviously for what might be a first round buy in the event in which SMU wins. Just a fascinating game with tons of tentacles and tons of potential catastrophic outcomes for certain teams. SMU could have a catastrophic outcome. Bama could have a catastrophic outcome. And Clemson could have a catastrophic outcome. Why, you might ask? Well, that's because these two teams, their rosters could not be any more different. The Mustangs joined the ACC from the American. And since 2022, Rhett Lashley, that was his first year as the head coach at SMU, he has added 67 transfers. Only Louisville who's added 71, has more. Meanwhile, since 2022, Clemson has six transfers. Five are currently on the roster, but there's only one scholarship transfer. That's player slash coach Paul Tyson, who also serves as the emergency quarterback. So in the event in which SMU beats Clemson, we'll get back to the age-old conversation. Why doesn't Clemson go into the portal? I think it's a fair debate, especially when you take into account that 85% of SMU's total starts this season come from transfers. The only FBS program in the country that has more is Texas State. Clemson has zero starts from transfers this year. The only programs that join them in that are the academies, Army, Navy, and Air Force. Now, SMU's been on a tear. They've won nine games in a row. Uh, they lost to BYU, but they lost by three. That was back in week two. So it's been a really long time, and things are starting to move in the right direction. They've gone 9-0 since that loss. Now, question one, who will win the first quarter? Because during this nine-game win streak, SMU is outscoring opponents by an FBS 139 points in the first half. Now, the Mustangs, they're used to being out in front. They haven't trailed very much this season. They've trailed for just over 76 minutes. In 12 games, it's not very much. That's the sixth fewest minutes spent trailing this season in all of college football. They're one of five teams to trail in four or fewer games, along with Oregon, Texas, Army, and Indiana. Three of those four are obviously solidly in the field of the college football playoff. And Army played the weakest schedule in college football. Now, the Tigers, they've been one of the best first quarter defenses in the country. So Clemson is giving up less than two points per game in the first quarter. They've also forced seven turnovers in the opening quarter. Both are top five in the FBS. So who wins the first quarter? Massive question to be answered there. Question two, do you realize how good SMU's defense is? Now, I think that most people, they visualize Rhett Lashley, they visualize SMU, and they think to themselves, this is a high-flying outfit, they score a million points, they're exciting, they win track meets. This is not the Sunny Dykes version of SMU. This is a team that in the last two years have really committed to being better on the defensive side of the football. They lead the ACC in scoring defense this year. They allow less than 20 points per game. Over the last two years, they've given up about 314 yards a game, and they also have 84 sacks in the last two seasons. That's the second most in college football. So this is a group that cannot just outscore you by scoring 40 a game. 
They can also keep you in check defensively because they have really improved at all three levels on that side of the ball. Question number three. Can Cade Klubnik and Phil Moffa be effective running the football? Now, Clemson will look to get Phil Moffa going because he's had just 97 rushing yards in his last three games. Now, take into account that against the Citadel, he had just three carries. But still a huge downtick in production when compared to the first nine games of the year. He had 981 yards in the first nine games and 97 in the last three. He's gone four straight games without a touchdown, and that is something that is worth noting. He did leave the South Carolina game a couple times, looked a little bit banged up, so he looks like he's not at 100%. Can he give them one last full-on effort in the finale of, I guess, this version of the regular season to punch their ticket to the postseason? Now, Cade Klubnick's also been pretty good with his legs as well. He's got 19 carries that have gone for 10-plus yards. That includes two 50-yard rushing touchdowns. And that 50-yard touchdown against Pitt was with about a hundred, you know, minute 16 left. They were trailing at the time. That won the game, and that was the latest touchdown or the longest touchdown inside of two minutes for Clemson to win the game in their history. By, prior to that run, by the way, they had eight yards rushing against Pitt. That 50-yarder really changed the outcome. The tough thing is SMU is one of the best in the country against the run. They give up just 95 yards per game. That's fourth in the FBS. Question number four. Will Clemson be able to hit some explosive plays? They've created 125 explosive plays this year. We qualify explosive plays by 10-yard runs and 20-yard passes. That's the eighth most in the FBS and the second in the ACC behind Miami, who has 138 explosive plays this year. Part of the reason why is Kate Kovic's been much better throwing the ball downfield. He's completing nearly 50% of his passes that travel downfield. It's second best in the ACC. He's got 13 touchdowns on downfield throws. That's tied with Jackson Dart for the most in the FBS. It's the most in the season by a Clemson quarterback since Deshaun Watson back in 2016. So Trevor Lawrence never hit this many throws downfield, which is pretty remarkable when taking into account how good he was. Now, the thing about SMU is not only can they get after you, not only can they stop the run, they also don't give up a lot of explosives. They give up just 63 explosive plays this year. That's the fourth fewest in the FBS behind Indiana, Ohio State, and Texas. So SMU really, really disciplined in the back end as well. Question number five, will Kevin Jennings continue to be super effective against pressure? Now, Jennings has been awesome. He's been one of the best in the country. When things break down, he can keep it alive. And we know against Clemson, things have a chance to break down quite a bit. Only Shador Sanders and Diego Pavia from Colorado and Vanderbilt, respectively, have thrown more passing touchdowns while under duress. And Jennings has been, he's been hit. He's been run around, he's created, and he does a really, really good job. And he knows he's going against a very aggressive defense. Clemson is one of the highest blitz rates in the country. All right, and they bring a lot of pressure, they bring a lot of heat, and they have been able to get home on several occasions. Now, they didn't get home as often as they could have last week, they had Lenora Sellers wrapped up multiple times only before he was able to evade and extend. But Clemson has 13 sacks over the last three games, including eight against Pitt on November 16th. And final question, can Clemson contain the super versatile Brashard Smith? Now, Desmond Reed, uh, who plays for Pitt, caught 10 of 11 targets for 108 yards against Clemson a couple weeks ago. And Brashard Smith is similar with that type of approach. Like he can beat you through the air, he can beat you on the ground, and Clemson has not been great this year against the run. They've given up about five and a half yards of carry. So they're gonna have to be great against Prashard Smith and the rest of this rushing attack for SMU. Trends in the game, Clemson's one and four against the spread as an underdog since 2019. That's the worst in the FBS over that span. Clemson's also 0-4 against the spread against teams with a winning record this year. And SMU is 2-0 and straight up and against the spread against ranked teams this season. I will not be picking the game, but I look forward to being on the call alongside Sean McDonough and Molly McGrath at 8 o'clock Eastern time on ABC.